G'day knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers here. How's this? About eight years ago on eBay, I bought a set of bedside tables. Now, they looked and sounded pretty good, but when they turned up, they were absolute rubbish. I must have had sucker written all over my face because I got absolutely fleeced. Check them out. And this is one of them. This is supposed to be solid timber. Perhaps they should have said, cheap vinyl over chipboard. The fronts keep popping off and the bottoms keep dropping out. They are just plain rubbish. I should have sent them back. Oh well, lesson learnt. So I've been instructed from She Who Must Be Obeyed to make a set of very simple bedside tables. No drawers, just clean straight lines. And I think I heard or read somewhere that simplicity is the height of sophistication. I like it. Now the first thing that I did was draw a life-size version of the bedside table. And the beauty of doing that is that you can get your bevel and place it on the drawing to work out your angles, which you can then transfer to your drop saw. It makes it very easy. Now the height of my bedside table is 530 millimeters which is 20 and 3 quarter inches. The width is 400 millimetres, which is 15 and 3 quarter inches. And the angles, we have a 16 and a half degree angle for the top of the leg. We have a 15 degree bevel for the front and the back of the bedside table. And the bottom of the leg, I've got a 19 and a half degree angle. And of course, all of that will change depending on the width and the height of your bedside table. So to get the show on the road, we need to cut the legs to length and also give them a bit of a taper at the same time. And I'm using pellet wood for the entire job. So here's our legs all nicely cut. Now just in regard to the angles and how to find them, remember earlier, we got our bevel and we placed it up against our drawing. Now to transfer that to your drop saw, all you need to do is place it hard up against the fence, just like that. And the objective is to get this line here, which represents the blade, to line up with the edge of the bevel. And to do that, you just simply move the drop saw base. So if we do that, and we bring it across until both lines line up, lock it off, and that's our angle, which incidentally is 16 and a half degrees. Too easy. So this is how I want the legs to look, just like that. So far, so good. Now all we need to do is cut another set for the other side, and then we'll tackle the sides, the ends, and the top. Too easy. Next, we want to build the sides and the front of our table. And to do that, I'm just going to nail one of these pellet board slats onto a pellet stretcher, keeping one edge nice and flush. And you should be able to get two sides out of the one slat. Now using your diagram, measure to the top of the stretcher, which is there. That's the overall height. That's the top of the stretcher. So measure from that long point to that long point and then cut a 15 degree angle on both ends. So all the sides are now cut and you might notice how the slat is a bit wider than the stretcher. Don't worry about that, it's not important. But what I want to do next before I assemble everything is mark out on this side where the legs are going to go. I want the legs to finish flush, so I need to cut these sections out. And there you have it. So this is how the legs are going to look inside this housing, just like that. Now we also need to cut a rebate on the tops of these legs 
so that they finish up nice and flush with this surface. And I've also left a gap around all these edges, just a small gap, because I think it adds to that rustic look. Now when rebating the leg, we need to keep that thickness on the leg and remove the rest. Let's do that. Beautiful. Let's see how it fits. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I told you it wasn't hard. Beautiful. Now to attach the legs, all you need to do is simply drill two holes in each leg to accommodate a bolt. And I'm pre-drilling with a smaller drill bit first because this old pallet wood tends to split, especially on the ends. So you just gotta be a little bit careful. And here's the side of the table all done. And I think it looks pretty good. Now all we need to do is to attach the front and then nail down the top. And you may have noticed how I've painted these bolts yellow. I'm going through a bit of a yellow craze at the moment and a really easy and mess free way of painting all those bolts at the one time is to drill some holes into a piece of wood, place in the bolts and then give them all a bit of a spray. It works like a charm. Now to attach the front to the side of the table, just simply position it so that it's nice and flush on the side and flush on the top. And you'll notice how I've cut an angle on the top and the bottom of this front board, which matches that angle there. That's so that when the top gets nailed down, it's going to sit nice and flat. And for the top of the side table, I'm just going to biscuit join three pallet wood slats together. Okay, let's see how this thing turned out. Oh, a bit heavy. Oh yeah. I like it. Looks good. And now all we need to do is to glue and nail the top down. And you might have noticed that I've added a brace across the center here. That's just for a bit of added support. It 
So there it is, all done. Now all we need to do is to give it a good old sand and then finish it off with a couple of coats of clear satin varnish. So here they both are, all nicely sanded and they feel absolutely fantastic. Now all we need to do is apply a couple of coats of clear satin varnish over the entire lot. Now I'm just a little bit concerned because I really like this light coloured finish and I know that whenever you apply a varnish or an oil it goes a little bit darker. So I'm just a little bit worried about that. Oh well, let's just give it a crack and see how it turns out. And here are the finished side tables. What do you reckon? Personally, I absolutely love them. Great tip, knackers! And don't go just yet, because there'll be a few photos going backwards and forwards of the finished product. Now, just a bit of quick housekeeping. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, the button is just about there. Click on that and become part of the DIY for Knuckleheads community. And while on that theme, check out my Facebook page at DIY for Knuckleheads. It's a ripper. The link is in the description box below. That would be the kettle. Off your time for a cup of tea. So until next time, I'm out of here. Cheers.